off of a branch and feed on, the, on what's in the periphery there. And this is, of course, the beginning of tool use, which was defined by Jane Goodall. These are her chimps, Gombe chimps, and they're termite fishing. So they select a branch here and they push it down to create a tunnel into that termite mound. They select the tools well to do this. And, and you've got to get it all the way down in so that they can access the termites. And here is a, a chimp going to select his tool. They select just the right one that's long enough, strip the leaves off, make the end a little bit wet, and they thread it in, and then the termites attack, and they glob on, and they pull it out, and then they strip them off there. And they get a lot of their protein out of this. And they teach this. This is culturally transmitted. So mom has brought the instrument and the baby to the lesson with a snack. And then the baby learns by watching mom. Probably mirror neuron generated and is already learning this is what you do. You take your tool and you stuff it down there and you push and then you, you go on your way. Okay? We have no way, of course, of knowing what our ancestors did. We don't, we can't look back a hundred thousand or a million years to know what role these tools or hand use was. We do have some clues though. These are some of the clues that we have and they're the instruments that have been discovered and these are two of the examples. These are flutes that were manufactured from animal bones, vulture bones. And these are about 9,000 years old and these are 35,000 years old. In fact, you think about how much effort had to be expended to individually carve all of these holes. In fact, this one was a little out of tune. They put another hole in there. But um, it's quite something if you think about the time that was expended and you can play these and hear them, what they, what they sound like. They're quite beautiful. So if you think, how, how did you have to control your hands to do this? It's quite impressive. Okay. And it reflects a, a, what I think is an evolutionary uh, driving force behind the role of music. So if you look in the instrumental record and you look at old paintings and all, what do you see? So these are instruments from the late um, 17th century, a harpsichord and a Baroque fiddle here. And these are then instruments from the early 19th century, you know, at the forte piano and Paganini with the fiddle. And then modern instruments. And what, what you've seen here, at least in the piano, is an evolution where the keyboard, of course, enlarged in size, was no longer plucked, was struck with an iron frame and a double or tripling in size and volume. And similarly with the violin, a uh, strung up string, high tension sound post and a bridge with a higher arched fingerboard. And the purpose of these was so that this instrument and these instruments here, which were designed to be played in a room certainly no bigger than this one, could reach an auditorium tenfold that amount to project to the very back of that auditorium. And also a whole repertoire that was developed to sort of entertain the masses. But at what cost? And I like to suggest that we may have asked too much of the hand. We've developed repertoire where only the superhuman can do this. This is Yuja Wang. And it's become a little bit of a show, you know. Sort of, a, I'm on the tightrope and let's see if I fall off. Which is a 20th century, you know, from